Hello and welcome back again to Archaeology 101. In today's video we'll be looking at the Neolithic burial mounds, Long Barrows. First let me establish some terminology. Barrow is an old English word for an earthen tumulus. Tumulus meaning a mound which covers a burial chamber. Other words do exist such as tump or even ken which have been attributed to Long Barrows and you can find these terms scattered through maps, books and the internet. For simplicity's sake I will just stick to using the word barrow. Long barrows appear throughout Northwest Europe, mainly southern Scandinavia, Iberia, West France and Britain. The construction of such megalithic monuments, megalithic merely meaning large stones and they were a common aesthetic in the Neolithic for monument building, appear on the continent around 5000 BC and are transmitted to Britain about 4000 BC where they are used up until around 3000 BC. Long barrows as of today can look relatively discreet and unremarkable and are perceived as long slopes or small hills but can even be no taller than a molehill due to ploughing and to natural processes covering and even eroding them away. However, when they were first built, many would have been impressive monuments constructed of large stones known as megaliths and an earthen bank thrown over the top with one or more entrances. Some barrows, however, are purely just earthen mounds, which have been thrown over a burial and are immediately covered, and these are a single event which, to our understanding, they're never reopened again. The megalithic tombs are usually made up of a short passageway leading to one to three chambers, and this is where the bones of the deceased ancestors are generally scattered or placed. Grave goods are uncommon, but you can see them in exceptionally small quantities such as the odd pot or specific type of stone. Many 20th century academics thought this to be a sign of collective and egalitarian societies as there seems to be no disparity between rich people and poor people for example, but that has been called into question quite recently. The dating of skeletons in Britain, although sparse and in many cases quite poor quality, do show that they can be hundreds of years apart when interned into a long barrow. West Kent in Wiltshire, for example, has been estimated to have been used for over a thousand years, and that's been achieved through dating the skeletons, and it's one of the most impressive and unusual barrows of all Britain. The long barrow culture was followed on a massive scale, and over 40,000 barrows are known in Europe, and then there are the ones which are unconfirmed, and there's the thousands of tombs which have been lost and destroyed through generations of intensive agriculture. And this really leads to the question how many long barrows actually were there in total, and they could perhaps enter the millions. Despite their sheer number, long barrows are not the only forms of burial in the earlier Neolithic, and smaller, less obvious inhumations occurred, such as ram barrows, which would explode in popularity during the early Bronze Age, and small stone coffins, which are called kists. Regional practices do vary greatly amongst Neolithic burial, and even within barrow construction, as no two megalithic tombs are the same, but are of similar design and presumably function. I want to play out a scenario of the processes which have been hypothesised to occur at a British Long Barrow burial to make it more vivid to the imagination. Imagine you are in the 3rd millennium BC Britain, about 5,800 years ago. Also, you are dead. That sucks. But rest assured, your body is going to be taken care of by your family and perhaps prehistoric priests. To begin with, you may be laid out in the fresh air or under a wooden enclosure, possibly even right outside the barrow itself. Here your flesh will rot away and be stripped off by carrion, or to speed up the process, deflesh with a flint knife. You may lose a few appendages here and there, but as long as the main limbs and head remains intact, that's just peachy. Now that your flesh has rotted off, you have become a literal bag of bones, and it makes it much easier to manipulate the bones and also to transport. You can now be placed in an earth and stone tomb, a long barrow, and your remains placed within its chambers, or perhaps scattered through all of them, along with the other lucky ancestors who were chosen to be entombed. You have become an ancestor, and may be essential to the ancestor cult thought to be practiced in the British Neolithic. Certain bones may be placed in different chambers, following some form of pattern or rite, for example, your long bones placed in one chamber, and skulls in another. However, just because you've been entombed, this does not mean that it's your final resting place. You may be taken out of the barrow for religious ceremonies, in places such as Hamilton Hill, and vast feasts are performed in tandem with the consumption of many cattle and other domestic foods. Possibly your remains or some of them will be left at this site, and the rest return to the barrow or inhumated elsewhere. And that is how a long barrow burial and the use of the bones after the initial burial may have occurred. In truth, however, there are so many rites and practices which we cannot possibly see, and some which we may have overinterpreted. I would, however, love to hear your thoughts on long barrows and what practices occurred at long barrows, and if you leave those in the comments, I'd love to read them. 
Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time on Archaeology 101.